Hello, hello, everyone. Bear with us just another moment or so here, and we will get going in no time. Uh, thank you all uh, while we wait here for uh, a few extras to join. Um, just want to thank you all for taking some time out of your um, surely very busy days. Um, lots going on, especially in the Microsoft space. So uh, again, we really appreciate you um, all uh, taking some time to uh, to sit with us today. So just another 30 seconds or so, I will make you guys uh, stare at us longer than you have to. Mm -hmm. You may notice um, Alex Lafam looks very different today. Um, so now we did get uh, one of our colleagues and one of our, uh, our very good friends, even from Microsoft, um, to join us. I'll go through some more formal introductions in a moment. Um, but uh, super happy to, uh, to have you here with us, Maddie. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for the invite. Oh, well, just another 30 seconds. I. Uh, I know how it is, and, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate there. If you're you, you have a day of just back to backs, and then you're 30 seconds, uh, you close out your first meeting 30 seconds late, and your second one, you're now at a minute. Um, so this is why my logic behind the extra two minutes here, just to um, let everyone hopefully catch up a bit um, as we move forward for the rest of it here. All right. Well, I think what we'll do is we will um, jump right in because we do have some pretty exciting content for today. Um, tools to help you upsell. Um, so this could be upsell, this could be um, just a net new sale as well. So really we just wanna help empower you um, as we do um, and as Microsoft has done for us for, for years. Um, and just let you know what's out there. There's a lot of good stuff that we have. Um, we, Microsoft and ShareWeb collectively kind of behind the curtain, so to speak. Um, so we just wanna kind of uh, make sure everyone's aware. These are great tools that are available to you. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, I think we can um, we can start jumping right in. Uh, so really quick, this is a show up presentation, if you uh, may have noticed. Um, so just a quick reminder as to who we are. Um, so again, we are the, or your, uh, all-in-one cloud partner. Um, so my colleague uh, Alex uses a great analogy. It's, um, you can go to the butcher and you can go to the bakery and you can go to the, uh, the, the, the fruit market. Um, these are all very valid ways to go about your purchases. However, the supermarket is just that much more convenient. It's a single point of contact for everything you need. Um, and we try to emulate that uh, logic, if you will. Um, you can see some of our favorite products here, some of the partners that we're, and vendors we're very proud and happy to support, um, as well as some of the services that we offer. Um, again, anything from uh, deployments to voice uh, implementations as well. Um, and most things in between. So we invite any of you um, to reach out to your account managers and any support you need. Uh, this could be from marketing perspective as well. Um, and if you're not yet a ShareWeb partner, do reach out. Um, we do have some um, kind of some special welcome bonuses uh, going on uh, this time of year. So with me today is you may notice uh, Maddie right here with me. Um, so Maddie is uh, someone I get to work with quite honestly, very closely at Microsoft. Um, she is the GTM manager, um, and Ken is a gentleman I've met just in the last uh, couple days here, um, as we're just kind of putting the cherry on top here, and we thought Ken would just be a, an excellent addition um, to the panel here today, just to um, show you, right? So I can I can talk if any of you guys know me. Uh, shutting me up is the hard part. Um, I can talk all about it. Um, showing you is something that I really thought would be, uh, or we really thought would be valuable. Um, hence why Maddie and Ken uh, were kind enough to join us here today. Um, and I'm James, I'm the, the other guy on the screen here, um, so I get to help with all things uh, modern work um, from a ShareWeb perspective. Before we jump in, uh, we did, uh, you know, this, uh, one of my colleagues, Nick and I, who kind of uh, put this together, and we missed the mark as, uh, as can happen, but yesterday was International Women's Day. Um, we just want to take a moment to give a shout out, a round of applause, and just kind of show our appreciation to a lot of the women that um, Nick and myself get to work with. Most of these are ShareWeb uh, employees. Um, sales and marketing for the large majority of the faces here. Um, so just a hats off, a big thank you to, uh, to all the women in the field here. We really appreciate you. you keep us grounded and honest. So um, just want to take a quick moment to, uh, to say thanks to uh, all of you and um, your, your respective leaders in your organizations. Good. All right. All right. Um, looking at housekeeping, um, it's the usuals. Um, this deck will be shared, the recording as well. Um, so if you do miss anything, if you're multitasking, as I may or may not do uh, most of the time, um, you can always circle back and catch into this content. Um, in the deck, you will notice that we do have several links that are available to you as well. 
Um, so do feel free to leverage those. You should expect this content normally in the next seven days. Um, and as our kind of open door policy uh, would have a say here, um, ask questions anytime, right? We're here to simplify the cloud. We're here to make your days a little bit easier, um, keep you as well informed as possible. Um, so don't be shy. Um, we do have uh, some of our team moderating the chat. Um, we'll do our best to answer everything we can in real time here via chat. Um, for the ones that we're seeing repeats, we'll most likely do a, a live Q&A on those. Um, but otherwise, um, we'll be sure to get back to you if anything doesn't get answered in the next uh, 55 minutes or so here. Boom, right through it. All right, so um, wanted to simplify the approach today um, and cover three um, topics, right? So if we think of our flow in terms of acquiring a new customer, upselling, um, layman's terms here, I might say it's as simple as one, two, three. Um, so identifying your opportunities, um, educating your customers so that they know um, the full value of what it is you're proposing. Um, and then finally, probably one of my favorite parts here is converting that um, into a sale, into a new customer, um, into a new relationship, uh, otherwise said. So with that in mind, um, yeah, just a little bit more formally, uh, what I just said there, what identifying, educate, convert, all right? So these are really the three themes uh, or topics that we'll cover today. Um, we will also have some resources um, scattered throughout the deck. Um, once again, that we'll be shared with you uh, very shortly. So you guys are you probably due for a little break from me here. Um, I will throw to Maddie to let her um, help us understand how we can better identify some opportunities. Thanks so much, Maddie. Of course, thank you so much for the intro, James, and for the call out on International Women's Day. It's a, definitely a very special day for myself as a, a STEM graduate um, and, a, and a woman working in tech. So I appreciate that. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Maddie Maya Christian. I am the go to market manager for our modern work and security solutions, or M365, um, here at Microsoft. Um, in particular, I actually wake up every day thinking about our small and medium business customers. So um, I am definitely a, a advocate for the small and medium business um, uh, segment, all up. Um, and we're here to help you um, do the best that you can and to bring the right customers and to have those customer conversations. Um, so today I'm going to actually focus on Project Orland. Um, it is actually a customer lifecycle tool. I mean, it, it was derived actually from a lot of feedback that we received from our partners over the, over the years um, that we don't have, or partners don't have rich insights um, for Microsoft 365 customer insights. Um, it's hard to access, it's complex, it's not actionable. And so we got a lot of that feedback. And about a year ago, we launched um, the private preview, a little less than a year ago, we launched the private preview of Project Orlin, which is now actually available. It's on public preview, so you have to sign up to get access to it. Um, but now it is available for the most part for you to leverage. Um, but what it is, is that it's, it's essentially a tool on Partner Center um, that really empowers our CSP partners to proactively engage and nurture their customers. And so it it's, um, looks at your CSP install base and really applies some of the data models that Microsoft data scientists have worked towards to surface prioritize opportunities that you can act on. And so these, like, these models can identify opportunities throughout the customer's life cycle, meaning that um, we can identify you know, a customer that's on a trial license, um, that are ready to become paid subscribers. Um, we can go in and see how much your customer is actually using the solutions um, and to flag any risks of churn. And so this information is now available in this, uh, in this tool that we can, we, can, um, we can go and work through. Um, the other piece that also comes to this with my, with Project Orlin, I think this is the most, this is the value proposition of Project Orlin in my opinion. They come with, every opportunity comes with actionable guidance um, and also, um, you know, links to, or at least provides you with the programs and offers or anything that's available for you to continue to drive that customer conversation. Um, and so an example with this would could be like, um, uh, you know, a solution assessment is a program that we can leverage. And we're actually going to talk about that a little bit later today. Um, but that's just something that, you know, the information will be coming through within, within the tool and within the platform. And then you can use the solution assessments program as a, as a tool to continue to have those strong customer conversations. So the next slide, you know, it actually shows a bit of a difference between Cloud Ascent and Orland. We've gotten this question multiple times before. Cloud Ascent has been available for partners for quite a few, for quite some time now. Um, and it can get confusing as to what each tool does. 
Um, so Cloud Ascend, or class as we like to call it, um, actually looks at propensity data to help drive marketing efforts to customers. So it will show information like historical revenue, sales opportunities, win and loss information, um, on-prem customers that we want to target with campaigns to move them to the cloud. Um, and how it works is that it uses, you know, it takes customer data, it collects customer data, and it turns it into recommendations. And billions of customer signals are collected throughout external services. And when I say external services, I mean like the entire World Wide Web. Um, so things like monitoring blog posts, press releases, social streams, and technical forums. It's still an AI-based model, very similar to Orlin, that goes in and kind of gathers all of this data. And once that data is gathered and collected, it's then fed into a machine learning model that then creates these structured um, data sets that your sales and your marketing teams can use to drive further um, um, further conversations or further targeting. So um, a good example on this one is, um, uh, you know, we have, um, you know, I think James will actually be talking about this a little bit later. We will have something called do more with less workshops. And so these are workshops that um, you as a partner can take and activate within your, within, with your customers. But, you know, as what can class do to help you do that? It can actually build you that propensity list on who to target to invite to these workshops. Um, and so that's kind of what class does versus Project Orlin, on the other hand, you're looking deep. It's intended to really see your existing customer base. It's, you can see how many licenses are active within your customer base. Um, you can see how much people are using or how much, the, how much of those licenses are being used. Um, and so you can see where there's a risk of usage. And so you want to think of um, class as being more, I would say, more marketing sales program effort oriented and Orlin being a little bit more, I would say, deeper on the usage of the licenses and the opportunities to actually go and have sales conversations to drive and customer upsell. Um, so on the next slide, actually, I'm going to take over here for a second because I do want to do a bit of a walkthrough of what Project Orlin looks like. Um, and so I'm going to take over. Let me see if I can share my screen. Yep, perfect. Uh, let me see. Share. Awesome. So can the team, James, can you see my screen? Just confirm. Amazing. Um, so this is uh, a bit of a demo of what Project Orland is. Just a caveat, um, you actually get a much better view than I do um, because this is actually available to our partners. So I have sort of this higher level summary view that I'm going to show you, but it gives you a good understanding of exactly what you can do with Project Orland um, and how you can leverage the insights that are coming out of this. Um, so when you go into Partner Center, this is what you'll see. You'll see this whole overview of customers that have opportunities, total opportunities there are, and then within the opportunities, what are some of the efforts that we can do? And so we can go in, there's opportunity to acquire more seats or acquire new users. Um, we can go in through and have that churn conversation. So how do we improve that customer retention? Um, and then the last one, which is um, upgrading, right? So how do we upsell from business basic to business premium, for example? Um, so for the purposes of today, and since we're driving an upsell motion together in the call today, I'm going to talk about the, ups the upgrade piece. So I'm going to click into here. Um, and I'm actually going to start off by showing you sort of all of the opportunities they are. So as you can see, um, you know, you have the customer, and this is the piece that I want to highlight, like you have this recommendation. So convert M365, convert to M365 business premium trial to paid subscription, for example. So it's really pulling those insights based on that customer um, to then actually be able to recommend what your next step could be, right? So this takes, I feel like takes a lot of work out of, um, you know, our organization, our business sales operations organizations, or even some of our sales excellence teams to actually go in and, and find how to do this. Now this tool actually allows you to go and do write that using our artificial intelligence, which is amazing. Um, so let's go back to upgrade customer subscriptions. Uh, when you go down, you can see that uh, you, you can see how their propensity status, their high potential, how much seats they have. Um, this product is, I think, a big mix of like what product they have or what product they can be upsold into. Um, and so for today's case, let's filter down and let's be, let's look for high potential and we want to upgrade these people or upgrade these customers to business premium. I know there's a bit of a glitch in the system here, but this is the view that you would get. And so as you can see, you have all of these customers that have, um, you know, you want to grow their business standard by enabling secure access and protecting customer uh, data high potential to upgrade these customers. We can click into that one and see what that customer recommendation looks like. 
Um, and so they, in, in the first thing you see is a recommendation, but I'm actually going to look at the usage. I'm going to go over to the last tab. This shows you, you know, what licenses they have. They have 11 seats, assigned seats of exchange online. They have 13 active users. Um, Intune is being used, Outlook, OneDrive for Business. You can see how much usage is monthly basis. Um, and then when you go over to subscription, you can actually see they have 100 seats of Teams Exploratory, which I think, you know, let's bring these folks over to Teams Essential. Like it just gives you some of that information right then and there. Um, the business standard 13 seats and they have two seats of Office 365 E5. Maybe they're just testing it out with a few folks, right? So um, this is a great view of just kind of what they have available. And then finally, I want to come here, which is the recommendation piece. Customer has, you know, over one license of business premium or Office 365. We saw that they had E5. Um, and But customers of this behavior are 28 times more likely to upgrade to business premium. Here's the action. Um, engage with the customer and talk about their advanced security and device management features. Highlight how business premium, um, you know, allows you to, in any of your employees, to be able to securely work anywhere from any device. Um, you can even point out the conditional access policy to help provide the right access to the right people. Um, and then it also even links that to some of our external resources that just go deeper into what the solution is that you can go in and talk to them to. But that is, in a nutshell, a very short preview of what Orlin can do for you. And I would highly recommend jumping on. This is free. Like, you can just take advantage of this. All you need to sign up. Um, and I think the link will be on the slide as well. But it's just a great overview and a great way to just identify which customers you want to have these conversations with. And then, you know, I'm going to pass it over to Ken actually to then walk us through what we can do with these customers and how can we bring them into the pipeline and what can Microsoft do to help support you. So cool. Um, I really hope uh, anyone took some notes on that there because that is, uh, <laughs> it's incredible, right? If you think of the old um, cold calling um, or the old, you know, just kind of tracking uh, by your own devices, uh, if you're like me, uh, pen and paper, uh, I mean, one note, of course. Um, but, right, we can take all of this um, out of the fold. Um, it's insightful. It's automated. Um, again, it's just a, a tool that I, I couldn't wait, uh, or we collectively as a chart web team couldn't wait to, to tell you guys more about. Um, like Maddie mentioned, there is a link there. So do um, go play around, um, throw uh, stuff at the wall. You'll see it works and uh, the insights are. Um, just tremendous. Um, yeah, and like, uh, sorry, I just I had to say something there is because I think that's such a uh, such an amazing tool. Um, sorry, Ken, I'll uh, no, no, it, it it is a very exciting tool, and definitely, it's a, it's the evolution of a uh, uh, of a uh, invest investment that Microsoft has been making for years. I mean, there was earlier iterations of this um, that were very, very hard for anybody to use, not, never mind to say our partners. Now you have it attached to your environment. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I think it's a brilliant tool. And, um, and definitely I hope all the partners listening here will take advantage of it for sure. So uh, what a nice start. I'll uh, talk a little bit about the solution assessment offering. So uh, my name is Ken, as, yeah, as I was earlier introduced. Uh, I'm part of the solution assessment team here in Canada. I, I play multiple different roles, but uh, ultimately I'm a, what we call a solution assessment specialist uh, in our group. And uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, what we have from a solution assessment offerings perspective. So if we could look at the next slide here, um, this is an example of, uh, of the solution assessments that we offer from an SMB perspective. This uh, SMB only in brackets here will give you a link to the Power BI uh, demo that I hope Hopefully, we'll be able to share with you shortly. I'm just going to talk a little bit more extensively about the assessment process and, and offerings that we have. You'll see different snapshots here um, of the sample outputs. And, and uh, you know, this is a great one pager, but I would definitely um, uh, make sure that you have access to the uh, solution assessment demo itself that I will show you. On the right side, you'll see the types of tools that we use for the SMB platform of the SMB customer segments that we work with, um, we focus on utilizing the Block 64 tool. Uh, so you'll see a lot more tools that are listed here on the right side of that page, but ultimately Block 64 is the tool that we use for this particular assessment. So why don't I talk a little bit about the process and then I'll jump into a demo from there. So if we move to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about what that looks like. 
So here you'll see from sorry left. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say maybe just a uh, in a sentence or two, really high level, um, what solution assessments is. Yeah, uh, for sure. For the, for the I apologize. I'm, I'm so used to everybody knowing about this stuff. So uh, ultimately, if we move back a bit, uh, just to the first uh, to that second slide here, I'll talk to it. So we offer solution assessments uh, uh, to our customers through partners and also uh, where customers come to us direct. Um, however, we know that our success is rooted in the attachment of partners. So anytime we do have a customer coming to us in a direct sort of field scenario, uh, we always ask who's your preferred partner because we want to make sure that the partner is aware of this. What the solution assessments do is help uh, customers that are trying to determine whether, you know, if they've got one foot in the cloud or maybe they've got no feet in the cloud, they're in an on-premise environment and don't know where to start. And they're having these discussions with you and part of that is, well, we don't know how many servers we have that are currently running on older OSs. We, we're worried about our SQL databases because we know we've got an app that's running on, uh, you know, a 2005 SQL, uh, SQL server version and we don't know how to get it off. Um, so a whole bunch of different things that you try and help them understand. Um, when you think about the solution assessment, the idea behind it is to look at the customer's environment gather the data from them. If you're familiar with what Block64 is, if you type in uh, in a Bing search, and we all know we, everybody uses Bing, uh, when you type in your search, look for Block64, and you'll learn a little bit about that third-party tool. It's a tool that we've been using for over 10 years. Now, the thing that's different, when we run this scan of a customer's environment, we can scan their server environment, so think about their infrastructure from a DC perspective, but we also scan what their modern workplace environment would be, or in other words, their information work. So we can also scan um, the client side or the endpoints that they're currently using. So if they have an Office 365 subscription or M365 subscription, we can see that. We can see what the utilization of that is. We can also see what sort of outputs they have in regards to, okay, so they have uh, a productivity software for, for us, for Microsoft, but they also have a secondary productivity software that some are using. So they're paying for two different products. So really it's around, okay, we can tell you what's going on, but we can also tell you where you're losing money and you're possibly paying for something twice. So maybe standardizing might be the right way to go. So the concept behind this is to give you a planning tool, you and your customer, a planning tool of their environment that then helps them determine what are my priorities? Where do I start? And, uh, and how is my partner going to help me? And I have this fantastic report that will help me break it down into pieces that I can build a budget around. And that's a key point here. So why don't we move a little forward? Hopefully that kind of answers the question. So the, the process that we look at from left to right here is uh, pretty much what we call, we call it demand generation. But ultimately, we are not out they're publicly talking about solution assessment. We're not putting advertisements in the paper or up on the web about how to get a solution assessment. Uh, we rely on our partners in our field uh, to do that. And then when you bring an opportunity to us, you can see on the bottom left here how we work together. What's the, what's the potential? What is your potential for this opportunity? How is the solution assessment going to help you with your customer? And once you determine that, then we can do an introductory call. So we move to the next step. You bring us to the table. We introduce what the process is. We show the demo. And usually we talk about the process, which includes what we call a letter of engagement, or LOE for short. You know, we love our acronyms. So the LOE comes in the form of an email. It's very straightforward, simplest email or simplest agreement format you'll ever see from Microsoft. But the customer can then respond to it and then tell us that they're yes, we agree, please proceed with the assessment. Important element here is when we're talking to the customer about that LOE, that letter of engagement, we ask their permission to ensure you as the partner are also part of the agreement, which means you're sta we are stating partner X, as well as the customer has access to the report. Because if you don't have access, then you can't give them the correct advice on what they should do next. So that is a very key element that we do. Next, once that's done, we get into the process of gathering the data. 
So you can see that the relationship here is you guys don't need to be sitting on the fence waiting for this data to be gathered, right? So this can take normally about a week to two weeks. Once we have it gathered, then we create the reports. What's different about the Block 64 tool is that we take the data and we put them into Power BI format. And you'll see how powerful that is once I show you here in a few minutes. But ultimately, when we do that, we then have an internal discussion. So that internal discussion is Microsoft and you as the partner. Because we've made sure that you're in the LOE, you have access to preview what the report is. So that helps in a multitude of different ways. One, for us, validate what we expect to see in that report. And for you, hopefully, it's like, ah, now I see there's an Azure scenario here that I was already talking about, and they definitely need to upgrade to modern workplace for either E3 or E5, right? So that discussion then becomes, okay, great, we validated it. The next portion of that then is the delivery. Then we go and deliver it to the customer. We show them the results. We walk them through the report. We give them access to the report, and then we thank them for their time and tell them, you know, we look forward to you working with your partner to help you get to where you want to be. And then from there on, it's back in your lap. You won't have to reach out to us. You don't need us from that, at that point, at that stage. We've been able to give you a tool in your uh, toolkit that you can then help that customer move forward. So, you know what? In the interest of time, let me see if I can take over here and show uh, an example of the Power BI, let's see. And I do that, share my screen. Okay, let me know when you can see. There we go. You can see. So here's an example in this report. And uh, don't worry, this the link to this Power BI uh, demo, this, this public demo, is in the uh, presentation that the Share Web team is going to share with you. Here's an example that we have. You'll see this view here has multiple tabs. The left side of the tab, environment details, is pretty much what we call the inventory. In other words, here's what we discovered when we scanned. The other tabs that you see here, Azure Foundations, it's really about looking at that environment through the Azure lens and positioning Azure. And then the Modern Workplace tab is about exactly the same sort of thing, looking at their environment and their users through the Modern Workplace lens. All right? This last piece, just ignore that. That used to, that's a Dynamics uh, upgrade scenario, and it really should not be in this demo, but uh, I can't seem to get rid of it. Uh, for now, I'll show you a couple of examples, but then, of course, please make sure you take uh, take some time to, oops, I shifted this off, that you take some time and check it out. Um, here's a view of what we see from the report. We'll see an operating system insights. What's key about this is that it starts to show the number of devices uh, that are running on operating systems that are either current, which is highlighted in green, or red, which is end of support, or yellow, it's extended support. Now that's for server. You could also have the client view as well, right? And so now as the client view loads here, it's not cooperating, there we go. We see the majority of their environment is running on Windows 10, there's a few running Windows 7 for some strange reason. So as you go through each of these elements, then you're able to show the customer what they have and what they are running. Most of this, 90% of the time, is not a shock to the customer. Some cases, it is. Uh, in this example, for instance, this is software applications. This is a view of every application that they currently have running in their environment. Now, the key here is that we can see, okay, you've got Microsoft stuff, you've got uh, other stuff, Adobe, common stuff. Um, the idea behind this is for the customer to use it as a method to identify stuff that shouldn't be there. Like, uh, I know we all love using 7-zip, but I know I love to pick on it when I'm trying to identify stuff that shouldn't be sitting on a server or a device. Um, last view quickly. I'll show you threat exposures. Uh, threat exposures to some of the big uh, big culprits out there, usually based on what we see from uh, operating system gaps. Uh, so from a client perspective, if I click on the client, we see that, oops, we see that uh, there's some gaps on Windows 10 and uh, also uh, on the server side, we're seeing uh, on Windows 2016. 
most of that is usually caused by not having, let's say, an updated service pack. And it shows exactly which ones are exposed as a result of not updating a service pack or having an operating system that's out of date. So I'll jump back and I'll show you an example of the modern workplace one really quickly so you can see how this is beneficial. So everything we just looked at briefly there was environment details, what we see as an inventory of the customer's environment. Now we're going to use this inventory to look at it through a different lens. And that is, let's look at your productivity of your environment. So we're starting to see stuff now like, okay, they're running uh, an Office 365 scenario or an M365 scenario, but they're also using Zoom. Right. So, OK, so products are devices with collaboration software. We have Teams and Zoom. So maybe they're not standardizing on Teams. Maybe uh, people are using t people or desktop versions of Zoom, which cost a few bucks. This estimation is down here. So you can see the whole concept here is to show them that, look, if you are paying for these other products, then you're double, you're double paying for two different uh, services that do the same thing better to standardize on Microsoft. So those are the types of examples you can look through. You could even see uh, what their usage is, which I know that you guys as uh, CSP uh, uh, providers and uh, utilizers would be able to determine what a customer is using today. But ultimately, the objective here is that this gives you a tool to then position and upgrade to them based on their active directory scenarios, OK? So I know that was a lot to capture there, a lot to go through, but let me just jump back to the slides if I, if I may. So uh, where are we here? There we go. All right. And I would say, I would encourage you to uh, take the opportunity to look at the links, uh, look at the demonstrations, um, and also uh, the last few things I'll say to you, um, the cool thing about this now is that we have a nomination process for for, can, for Canadian partners. And this link, that, this active link here, partner customer nomination, that comes directly to myself and my team. And then we determine if that customer is indeed an, an SMB account or if it's a managed account, whichever the case may be. And then we will work with you on doing that assessment if it fits the right mold. And the right mold being, is there an opportunity for you to grow that business with our products and your services wrapped around it. And uh, and we could do a solution assessment as a stepping stone to help you get there. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to the team and uh, I'll be on for the next few minutes uh, in case there's any questions. Thank you very much. Thank James, you, thank you so much, Ken. Uh, yeah, I was gonna just kind of give a moment for everyone to just kind of let that oh, soak lot. in uh, <laughs> um, oh man like, so not only is it a lot it's the potential of what it could be um how much simpler again uh share web and our tagline on my favorite jacket here is simplify the cloud so um just making it easier for you as partners right so we looked at initially how do i find new customers how can i find new opportunities within my base um or outside of my base potential um on-prem customers class or cloud ascent rather and project orlin um now it's okay, now I know who I want to sell to. Um, I have a good idea and I even have some marketing collateral, um, but asking the customer questions, um, you know, it's not their bread and butter like it is ours or yours. Um, so you're gonna ask them questions and they're gonna tell you the ones they used in the last month and they're gonna forget the ones that have been there for uh, 10 years plus, right? So right. take away the guesswork. That's why I said, I just wanna let it breathe. I just want this to all soak in. Um, these are initiatives that I've been I've been dying to uh, to get in front of everyone and just kind of talk about and thank you guys so much for um, supporting uh, us and our and our channel in this. Um, tons of value, uh, patting our team on the back, everybody putting this together, and for you guys and Microsoft obviously for putting these products out there. But so much value. Um, again, I just thank you guys so much. What one last thing I forgot to mention because I always forget. These are free. The uh, like, but and I'm like, I'm not going to speak for Maddie, but I think she's nodding as well. But uh, the solution assessment offerings, uh, again, as I said, we don't go out and broadcast this uh, because it's usually based on an opportunity, right? But these are free to you, then these are free to you to offer your to your customers. So use the nomination and use the fantastic tools you have in in the Orlando project as well. 
I'll be quiet now. Thank you. No, no, that's perfect. You come back anytime and you bring value like that. You're, you're way more than welcome at all times. Uh, no, again, uh, so uh, very, very cool. Um, I'm going to try and follow Sue. I think the content uh, for, for the rest of this year is, is as interesting and as uh, exciting. Um, just those two in particular, I really want to kick off the show like that because um, it makes sense, right? As I said, if I kind of simplify that buying process or more the selling process from our perspective, it's finding, it's understanding what we want to offer, um, getting our customers on board, um, and then um, obviously closing the sale. So um, identifying in depth, right? Customers and the solutions um, we just saw again from the, uh, from the team here. Um, carrying forward now for looking at in terms of what our base, um, so getting them ready, right? So we can uh, make all the suggestions in the world. Um, again, knowing our position in the channel and yours especially, um, we are providing the right guidance. We are there to deliver the value um, that we speak to. Um, and sometimes it's just a question of the customer um, buying in, I guess is uh, uh, probably not the best way to say that, but having them, uh, giving them an understanding of what it is you're really offering. Um, so in that light, we're looking at educating as kind of our second step uh, through this process. Here is a great initiative, again, from the Microsoft Teams. Oh, it's okay, Nick, thanks so much. Um, uh, a great initiative from the Microsoft team called Do More With Less Workshops, um, formerly known as the SMB Workshops, if you've heard us speak or if we've spoken about it, um, but a great initiative um, the idea behind it, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of skim through the slide. I won't, uh, I won't read over all of it, um, but it is to demonstrate value and to just show the power of the Microsoft ecosystem can do um, from consolidating uh, from a cost perspective, um, reducing maybe some redundant um, softwares. Um, and again, just getting a chance to be in front of them and educate them and remain that source of value for them. Um, what we want to kind of have is that uh, that kind of bell effect when they think IT, they think of you. Um, and again, getting in front of your customers, in front of your base um, is a great way to gain that mind share and to remain that first call um, for all things IT. Um, so the objective or the, um, the way to go about this more so is a 90 minute workshop. This is something that's led by you and your team. Um, do reach out to your account rep, um, we'll get in touch surely. Um, and we can kind of dive through the ins and outs. There isn't too much fine print, quite honestly. Um, I'd be happy to go through with each and every one of you. Um, but a 90 minute event delivered to your customers, just showing them the potential that you, they um, have to benefit from the Microsoft solution. Um, so this can be in various forms. Um, so there is a Defender for Business, uh, Teams Essentials, Windows 365. Um, and there's even a do more with less as kind of the general um, talk track, if you will. Um, there's marketing collateral ready. There are presentation or slide decks ready as well. Um, so again, in the effort to, to remain um, in our position here and help you to simplify the cloud, um, I'd gladly walk you through the, uh, the program of this initiative here. You tell me what roadblocks you have. Um, I have an amazing, amazing team behind me beside me, what am I saying, uh, beside me here, and uh, together we're going to find a way to um, make this very attainable um, for all of you. Um, hopefully, many of you saw, have seen the, uh, the big blue uh, square in the bottom left here. Um, so what's in it for you, right? Like having initiatives and obviously growing your base and having them better educated, understanding the risks um, that exist that they aren't pre properly protected are all really good values, and that alone um, is how all of you have gotten to where you are today. Um, but a little something for you um, is just something we're also really proud to support here. Um, so a $1,500 incentive um, for you for delivering a workshop that will help bring you sales uh, in the long run. Um, so again, I, I simplify things maybe a little too much at times. I see this as, as a kind of no brainer. Um, the marketing collateral is there, the presentations are there the uh, co-speakers, uh, whatever you could need to help make this a success and put on a great show for your customer. Um, honestly, we're, we're, we're all in, um, so we'd love to be a part of that. Um, if you have any interest or your team have any interest in this, do reach out to your account rep. Um, hopefully uh, they know me or at least someone from the, uh, the Microsoft team here at ShareWeb, um, and we'll get this trained out for you in no time. Nice, uh, that was kind of on the educate side of things. 
Um, again, a really cool initiative. Um, we do hope that you are all running these types of initiatives and programs on your own. Um, in case you're not, a nice little kickback uh, just doesn't hurt too much. That. Um, so yeah, so then uh, we look at kind of the final of our three, three pillars um, here as we go through. Um, so we saw identifying our base, we saw educating our base, and now we're looking to convert the sale. Um, so again, these are tools for you as partners, as is the theme of today. Um, and here are just a few um, of some of the, uh, of the tools that are available to you. Um, so I'll refer to my uh, very close and personal friend. I'm just kidding. Uh, don't uh, come at me. Uh, but uh, Sadia had some great words. So uh, he's the CEO of Microsoft, uh, in case you weren't quite aware. Um, obviously, pretty brilliant guy. Um, that's something I even see at the, the Microsoft office. It's uh, we help to empower every organization on the planet to do uh, more with less. I probably butchered the last little part of that, um, but helping organizations achieve their full potential, if I had to um, say in a way that is far less intelligent than this gentleman, um, that's kind of the way I, I take this one. Um, so do more with less is a methodology. Um, it's, uh, from Microsoft. So the idea here being to save costs. So you want to consolidate. You saw when, um, <clears throat> sorry, you saw when Ken was speaking earlier, um, obviously Microsoft shop, but they were using a lot of Zoom, it's kind of silly. Um, well, let's consolidate. Having redundant uh, communication vendors might not be the best in terms of a cost, uh, from a cost perspective. So let's simplify, let's reduce, um, let's do more with less. As you guys know, Microsoft is an incredible tool. Uh, if you guys give me the runway, I will talk about Teams all day and probably all night, um, but it can do so much. So let's simplify. Um, same can be said for the security side of things. Um, having multiple add-on vendors, um, yes, a means to an end by all means, but with the advancements in Microsoft Defender, Defender for Business, um, just, just so much improvement and so much value in that suite. Um, again, let's consolidate from a cost perspective. Let's increase the security by having this all under a single roof, virtual roof, of course. Um, and then the productivity aspect, right? So if we can't uh, make more time in the day, let's make better use of our time. Um, so improving productivity, again, not having to jump through windows. Was this meeting on Zoom? Did I send you an email? Was that on chat? Was that Slack for some reason? Um, like all of these things, it's maybe 30 seconds at a time, but um, it does add up. So let's stay efficient, improve productivity. Again, do more with less um, is the Microsoft mantra here. And on here is the fun stuff. So that's what you guys, uh, you know, some of us may have showed up for. Um, so promotion. So again, knowing that concept, right? Like we believe in you and, and, and all our partners here. So we're well aware. Um, Microsoft is a great way, um, a great partner, a great product and a solution that we get to offer to customers. Um, do more with less with this customer upsell promo. Um, again, I really hope most of you are aware if you have or not, Again, do reach out to your account rep, um, do reach out to me um, directly or any of my colleagues here. Um, we'll gladly walk you through at a high level. This is what the, the, uh, the promotion is. Three target customers for this, let's say. So anyone who's net new to Microsoft, so this is no existing Microsoft licensing. Um, existing customers who are gonna upgrade. So maybe going from a business standard to a business premium and ETH, uh, sorry. Uh, business basic to a business standard as well would also follow suit. Um, and then those who are perhaps on the legacy platform. Um, so I hope I'm not uh, playing too much of a spoiler here, but there was this thing called NCE last year, um, but it's real, it's a real thing. Um, so these are ways that we can help to soften um, this uh, kind of shift in the platforms. Um, so we're looking at six products in particular. Uh, business Basic, Standard Premium, Apps for Business, Team Essentials, and uh, Defender for Business. I was going to go to an acronym there. Um, these are products that are, uh, that are affected or that benefit from this promotion. The idea is that you would be able to upgrade to the NCE version or upgrade license. Um, so from a Business Basic to Standard, Standard to Premium, um, you'd be able to do these upgrades and you would benefit from the annual paid monthly price while maintaining your monthly commit. 
Okay, so the annual paid monthly price on the monthly, um, just a one minute recap on NCE. Um, the ability to subscribe to an annual plan did afford you better pricing, um, or otherwise said, uh, there would be a site premium for maintaining on the monthly uh, Microsoft term. Um, so here's, uh, with this promotion, we're able to negate effectively that, um, that uptick in the, uh, in the price, um, at least until June. So again, do take advantage. Do reach out if we can clarify this any bit further. Um, it would absolutely be our pleasure and leverage this again. Uh, we're talking about converting sales. This is a great tool. Um, kind of try before you buy, no risk, um, however you want to say it, but um, keep that flexibility, fee, uh, flexibility, but benefit from the pricing um, as part of the new structure. So here's even some examples. Again, we'll be sharing the deck with you. Um, but again, it's kind of the similar scenarios there. So net new to Microsoft existing. Um, they even have kind of a fallback option, again, all within uh, the scope of this promotion. Um, so just different ways you can go about, uh, the, about leveraging this. So feel free to screenshot if you want now. I'll pause. I'll do a fun pose here for a minute. Um, otherwise, you will be getting the deck. Um, and do feel free to, um, again, leverage it. Feel free to reach out to our team. We'll chat with you about it. We'll kind of share some insights that we've seen um, as to how to best present this. So again, um, more tools in your toolbox, uh, if you will. Nice, and we have one more bonus promos. This one's a little bit newer. Um, I don't believe we've made quite as much noise about this one. It is just a month old, um, but this is essentially an uh, M365 E3 uh, promo. Um, so this is a 15% discount on M365 E3 when you commit to an annual term. Pause, just to let that sink in. It's 15% off M365 E3 on an annual commit. The audience, this one is slightly uh, more constrained than the, uh, than the do more with less uh, or the customer upsell promo, so sorry. Uh, these are strictly for new to M365 E3 customers. So if they had O365 oh, E3, ding, ding, ding. Like that's a, that's a great, um, great way to leverage this one. If they're going for a business premium, maybe their C count's growing. Um, and E3 um, could be uh, another way to go about that as well. Happy International Women's Day. Uh, once again, just because, um, again, means uh, so, much, uh, so much to us. Um, but yeah, so great promotions. Great colleagues, you saw the women there, and uh, this is kind of like the Oscar music playing. I feel here with the uh, the wrapping up coming on, and um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, various promotions for you to be able to leverage. Um, an amazing team, um, as you saw on some of the slides, and along with Ken and Maddie as well. So again, anything we can do to help support your business, again from the identifying. Uh, go to market is a whole nother topic where a whole nother can of worms we're going to open up in the next couple of weeks here. Um, solution assessments, educating the base, using the promotions to close. Um, again, I think Microsoft did an amazing job and, and we're really happy to be a part of it all. Um, and hopefully uh, there's some good value in, uh, in any of this uh, for you guys. Uh, so James, we and do girls. have a few questions. Um, and I'll just field Absolutely. them to you, see if you want to take them. Uh, so the first one is, uh, so a customer has a CPA type customer that I want to, that uh, they want to do a proof of concept with uh, for AVD and a, and a small cloud server to run QB software. Um, and they're wondering what the steps would be uh, from going to point A to point B. Full disclosure, I am not the uh, Azure guy. Um, I do have the steps though. I do have the steps. The steps is to reach out to your account rep um, do send them that exact um, little blurb. Um, we'll connect you with one of our Azure specialists. We'll verify the resources required. Um, and we can even scope out um, an ADVD uh, deployment for you. Um, so get in touch as kind of the singular sub I can suggest here live in the moment. Um, but again, uh, a member from our team will gladly dive into the details. I don't want to oversimplify it here, um, but they'll uh, they'll dig in and get a little bit more of the, of the meat out of there. And then, uh, Absolutely have some guidance for you, again, right up to ProServe um, Professional Services, kind of my slang way of saying it. Um, we can definitely help uh, on that type of project, and we do uh, we do them often enough. 
Awesome. Uh, and then just a second question now um, from the same person. Uh, can a customer go partially NCE with permanent office staff uh, and month to month with field type persons who may not be permanent? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So that hybrid approach is something I um, honestly I encourage. Um, I love. Uh, I'm thrifty. I'm a really cheap uh, cheap, is what the wife calls me. I'm, I'm thrifty, is what I say. Um, so yes, I'm all for stretching the dollar, um, taking advantage of the discounts on the annual terms. Absolutely, where you know you might have that fluctuation, we'll keep those on monthly without running any risks to yourself. Um, it's not that it's worth taking the hit on the price, but that flexibility um, is worth its its weight in gold. Um, so yes, absolutely. Hybrid. I don't know if it's really called hybrid, but mix of monthly and annual terms. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. For licenses that are available in both of those terms, which is the bulk, um, definitely a great observation, a great way to go about it. Super cool, it's a little light and you can tell this is this is real This is real behind the curtain here, guys. There's, there's no seated questions. You can see we, we just have the two that were are real and one almost caught me off guard. So um, thank you so much for your questions like that. Um, Anything we can do to help clarify this once again, do reach out. Um, honestly, it really is a pleasure of getting to uh, to build this channel with you, to build yourselves um, and your individual organizations there. It's honestly, it's a, it's a privilege for all of us. Um, so I think on that note, it sounds like we're uh, running lower on questions. That means we did an amazing job, Maddie. You did great, um, as it can. I thank you guys so much again. Of course, I'm happy to be here and I'm available um, as well. Feel free to reach out to me or through the Shorebub team, um, but uh, definitely take advantage of what we have to offer. Like Ken said, like these are free and so let's take advantage and use them. I'd love to get more partners onboarded to Product Orland. I personally think that's going to be a tool that's really going to boom in the next few years and I'm trying to get people to be early adopters. So I'd love to partner with you um, to get you onboarded for Orland. Absolutely. So it's all there at your uh, your disposal team. Um, so with uh, with that being said, a last uh, thanks to uh, to our, our teammates here. Um, thanks to all of you for taking some time. Um, look at that, even five minutes back in your day. Um, you're welcome on behalf of the uh, ShareWeb team. But uh, now again, all seriousness, thanks so much. And uh, can't wait to chat with uh, with all of you soon. Thank you. Have a good one.